You know, and it's, it's very frustrating as Julie and I have gotten involved and we've been down in Bismarck and at different meetings and we've met with a lot of the charter groups that as we sit in the audience and we listen to a lot of federal officials that are out of state or out of the area and they are literally deciding and debating our, our futures. And I tell you, until, I, until any of them actually comes home with me, they have no idea what we go through to hang on to what we have. And it's very frustrating when you talk to people out of the area and they go, well, there's been a billion dollars spent up there. It's been a billion dollar Band-Aid. It hasn't, it hasn't solved the problem. The farmers haven't gotten their land back. People haven't gotten their homes back. People haven't gotten their livelihoods back. We have people leaving the area. We have lost 22 individuals to this lake because of immersion going off these roads that are being raised to ridiculous levels and we have lost their lives to this lake because they can't get out of their vehicles. It's absolutely inexcusable that this is what this basin area has been subjected to and uh, we kind of feel like we're, we're paying the price when there is, a, there is a little bit better solution to get some more water off this lake. I don't have much left to, else to say. I can tell you my own situation. I am now living on an island that's about a thousand acres and I am landlocked. I absolutely do not have a footpath to get off where I'm at. So for me to leave, if the weather is quiet, we can boat out the back to old 281. I am not a water fan, let me tell you. I don't do boats for recreation and that is a little bit of a struggle for me. Uh, I can get out the north. I drive a four-wheeler for about a mile and a half, and I go through a field, and I go around the sloughs. We had wood posts put on. We found the narrowest path of water we could cross. It's about 300 feet. We put a wood post on one end, or side, another wood post on the other side, and we ran a guide rope. I have a wonderful gentleman, Pat Miller, out of Minnewakan, that so graciously offered us his Argo all-terrain vehicle to get in and out. Uh, but when you get that Argo in four or five feet of water, it drifts. And so it was a little frightening, so we put a guide rope in. I can't run the Argo and hold on to the gu guide rope to get me across. So now we are literally uh, four-wheeling a mile and a half, and then we have to walk so far through mud to get to this duck boat, and then we get in, pull ourselves across with this rope. When we get to the other side, we're walking another quarter of a mile to a township road to get into an old vehicle we have sitting there that we can afford to lose if it goes in the water because we still have a mile and a half of patches of water to get through on the road before we can get to our good vehicles. A lot of people ask me why I do that. My elevation of my farm is 1476. I'm not standing in water. I want my road. If they're going to keep this going, we want our road. And that's what 20, Bill 2369 is for. If any of you are sitting at an elevation where you are not going to stand in water, you do not have to leave your homes. That bill, Julie and I worked hard for that bill and our legislators worked hard for that bill. That bill passed unanimously through the House and the Senate for us. You all, if you have lost your roads, you all deserve your road home. Don't give up, keep after it. You know, get a hold of your local officials. We got our state uh, presidential declaration, so federal's kicking in there 75%, the state's doing their 10%. That local match has not a zero match, but has been helped out with that bill. So I just urge all of you to pay attention to the bills and what's out there for you because there isn't one person at the end of this construction season that should not have a road back to their property. Thank you, guys.